Is everything working correctly? Okay, there it is. I was wondering what was up. It's your boy Sino here. What's up, Donnie Spontane? <laughs> um, yeah, man, I, I want to definitely... Uh, And to come in and uh, thank you guys, man, for all the support you guys have been giving the page and everything else. I want to say thanks for all of it. So, we need to talk about hip hop history. People got to think about it, man. It was like mad, crazy times back in like the 90s. Because the 90s was just, you know, getting there. You know what I'm saying? So, when the 90s came around, there was a, I would say, a little bit of static going on in the, uh, in the areas based on where they were from. But Eric Sermon was the artist, you know, and and Eric Sermon did his own thing as far as producing records and and going up and down and you know with, with scratch and all that stuff. But Eric was the one that was first making up the sounds. So. While EPMD was blowing up, had quietly four of the greatest albums ever. Like, to have, no one to have back to back to back where you can't say, okay, well, this one was a dud. They knocked it out the box from the gate. And then the fifth one, after all those years, that wasn't slack. So, when Eric started doing his own thing, things began getting to change a little bit for him, but let's not go there right now. Wendy Williams was trying to make it on the radio station, you know, and controversy was her thing. That was her king claim to fame. And at that time, finding out who was the gay rapper. You know how devastating that was back in the game? Like, if you wanted to find out who that was in the 90s, that would, like, not only probably end his career, he could lose his life in the 90s. That was severe. But for some reason, she was, like, Fixated on on uh, Eric Sermon, like going after Eric Sermon. Many people never knew why. It was a whole different story altogether. Eric B was her former boyfriend, heavyweight in the game, and was the producer of tracks that was. Uh, That went out to Rakim. Rakim ended up being the guy he was working with, putting the beats together, the whole nine. Now, Eric B was the kind of no nonsense guy. He hung out with no nonsense dudes, he was all business. Now, the only other problem with this is hip-hop got it confused. And that happens a lot in this business. Hip-hoppers get things confused. Straight up and down. 
they will get it confused. And Eric B was who she was dating at the time. When she was like first coming up in radio, whatever, you know, and she was basically a groupie of Eric because he was powerful, big, nobody messed with him. So she liked that. Eric got power. So when EPMD and Eric Sermon, because she was cool with, you know, Eric Sermon all through that time or whatever. Then, like, she was, like, the number one supportive person. So everybody saw Eric Sermon and assumed that she was dating Eric Sermon when she was, like, I'm dating Eric. It was Eric B. who she was dating, not Eric Sermon. So everybody thought they used to date, they used to mess around, and he didn't do that. He was like, nah, that wasn't me. You know, and she was looking at Eric B., you know, as another guy she probably liked, and he wasn't going for it. So women back in those days used to call men gay. If they didn't want to mess with him or anything else, I think he might be gay. So she was just, like, making that a reality. And it was like, you know, like, you ain't finna answer that? <laughs> you know, like, they, they, like, people looking like, dude, you just letting her talk? You letting her get off like this? You know, like, what's wrong with you? So. As you pretty much know. When that went down, you know, Eric Sermon's out there in Brentwood. So, when he's in Brentwood, you know, and they come over and go every place else and do their thing, he rolled with a bunch of unsavory people, too. <laughs> he was more attached to them than the music industry back then. Then when, you know, somebody who's your homeboy, who you rap with, who you might have financial problems with, you know, something happened to them and his family and the people associated with you basically was involved. You might need to get out of town. So when he was doing his thing outside Atlanta, he was the first rapper from New York to go to Atlanta and set up shop and get it popping. They gave Eric Sermon the key to the city. He opened up stores, everything. He was the first one to bring New York artists out there. Red Man was out there, Keith Murray, they all in Atlanta. So when they were bringing out parties and everything, then they come met them at. And all these people, then Too Short moved there, like, shortly after uh, he got there. So while Eric Sermon's there, shortly after that, here comes Short Dog and everybody else. So they were the first ones to really set this off. But the rumor was Eric Sermon used to date Wendy and then it didn't go well. And Eric was like, I never got down with Shorty. You know what I'm saying? She liked me like that. Like she was on me. And she already dated Eric, another Eric, which was Eric B. But nobody knew if Eric was just smashing, hitting it, because Eric B is quiet. You know, and Eric Sermon's normally quiet when he ain't rapping. Now he got a a rap deal solo out career and doing his thing
Dude, they had Shades of Lingo out there, man. I used to love Shades of Lingo. Dude had the triple cr crossfade style. I was I was on my way, way to the store, store, store. I was like, wow, that's a different thing. Run, run, hide, hide. You can't, can't escape, escape. To get the, get the hits. I got the, got the weight, weight, red, red, laser, laser, dot, dot, scanning, scanning. I was like, what is this? He was killing that flow. Nobody had ever heard that on a main stage ever. I mean, it was to the point where Russell Simmons, when he separated them and gave Eric Sermon that contract, it was based on the fact like it wasn't going to hurt Def Jam. Def Jam was in transition at the time, so they couldn't really move Eric Sermon over to Def Jam. A lot of people thought he was on Def Jam, but he was not. He was signed to Rush Associated Labels. So he was associated, but not really. Signed, because they couldn't really sign Eric. Not Def Jam. So they had to work some out. Because Russell Simmons knows that Eric Sermon could bring in or and probably produce for other talent. So when he had that mansion in Atlanta, the E-Wing, you know, they went that way. And this happened a lot. This happened a lot in hip-hop, like, Those two were confused for each other about what I would say all the time. Because I remember MC Tony had Freddie Fox. And Freddie Fox, you know, was going you know, from Long Island. So he was going to link up with uh, Eric B. And Eric B was on the scene and they was going to hook up and do their thing. So when they was like, Yo, Eric didn't want to get, he was like, I hit Eric up. I ain't know Eric was going to be here, Freddie Fox, because that was his man's. You know, they had got cool in those things since, you know, they blew up with Rakim. You know, that was over. <laughs> so they had Eric be as president and my melody on a, on a, like a two, two disc single, you know, or the rink or the record. That's your two-hit single, rather. And back then, Rakim verses and songs used to be four long verses. He would do six-minute records. And back then, you know, they telling you, man, look, you're going to have to shorten these rhymes up because we're running out of space. There's only so much space you could have on a record, which is true. There's only so much space you could put on a CD, which is true. Then they had the idea. Who says we can't make a double album? Stupid, you don't make two records anymore. That's for rock bands. Rappers don't make two two albums. No one's going to pay for that. Which was true at that time. It was, But for people to think it wasn't thought of, it was thought of then for Eric B. and Rakim. I mean, two of the, some of the probably the greatest rap albums of all time with two of some of the greatest rap songs were made, Follow the Leader and Lyrics of Fury. You know, you're looking at perfection. Eric B. and them, they were at the top of... That's probably... That was probably the greatest era ever for hip hop because this was growing and nobody really expected Rakim and Eric B and Rakim to, to go as far as they did and to be able to move the way they did. It was totally unique. But they always got mistaken for each other. So when Freddie Fox was like, yo, and he's like, yo, I hit Eric up and he didn't hit me back. And he in town. Wasn't the right Eric. It was Eric Sermon. It, was, it wasn't it was Eric B. 
because he was like, man, why would he blow me off? You know, because it wasn't, it wasn't Freddie Fox's, it wasn't Eric B, it was Eric Sermon. Eric B was nowhere around during that time. So there was talks like, like, man, you know, EPMD is breaking up. And so is Eric B and Rakim. But the talk was, they, nobody knew it was both of them. Like, everybody was talking about, man, they finna break up. And they was talking about Eric B and Rakim. Like, Eric B and Rakim, man, that thing's finna blow up. I mean, they were talking about, look, I'm even getting confused. They were talking about EPMD breaking up. But no one knew that at that time, even all the way back in 91, they were talking about them possibly splitting. And they were like, no, they not finna split. They got Daz Effect. They got Red Man. They got a new artist, Keith Murray, they just signed. What would they be breaking up for? And at the same time, everybody talking about, oh, man, they finna split up. Eric finna leave. Eric going solo. Eric going solo. Everybody's like, what is this Eric going solo crap? Where is they hearing that? Because it was quietly kept. They like, man, how did people find out what's going on over here? So... Now, it was rumors that that was ruining everything. Rumors was doing everybody in at that time. Oh, I heard a rumor. Everybody heard a rumor. Everybody allegedly heard something about the other. They were trying to make Rakim go at it with Eric B and start a war. And this was all in the streets. Yo, Eric got all this money, man. He's screwing you over, B. He getting all the money. We ain't no way he's and why you broke. So, Eric B was trying to go and negotiate for a new deal. Because when they had, they had another deal on the table. Like another album and all this stuff. So when they did the Don't Sweat the Technique album, that wasn't supposed to be their last album with the, you know, with MCA. But their contract was about to expire. So they wanted to negotiate an extension. But, you know, they were, were like, man, look. Let's get this thing going and let's release this. Eric B wasn't really feeling it. And neither was Rakim. And Eric B refused to sign the new contract. Because he knew Rakim would probably lead the project. Because Rakim wanted to go solo. So everybody's like, man, Rob, man, if you was on your own. You know, it's now everybody looking at it like Eric B and Rakim. You know, when you first dropped, nobody knew who was Rakim and who was Eric B. We thought, you know, you was Eric B when you first came out. Around in New York, we know, but around the world, they really didn't know. When Paid in Full came out, Paid in Full, which is 100% true, when Paid in Full first came out, that was some people who weren't in New York, first time seeing Eric B and Rakim. You didn't know who was Eric B or who was Rakim. He was like Eric B and Rakim, so, okay. Uh, it's him. But see, what they didn't know is that normally the DJ name goes first. Not the rapper. It's normally the DJ's name goes first. DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince. Eric B and Rock Kim. You see? Because the DJs had the money. The rappers was broke. <laughs>
Now, in those times when that happened, they end up having to go to court to resolve the case and everything else. Um, so the group just dissolved completely. And everybody was looking at Eric B versus Rakim when it was the record label who was jerking them from the beginning. And nobody ever thought about that. Screwing them out their masters. Now, moving forward, let's get into it. Eric Sermon. He was going through the breakup at the same time with EPMD. And they was trying to keep it quiet. But they stuff was leaking out. And then Eric B. and Rock and Kim was taking the slack for it because they was doing the same thing at the same time. Both Eric's. Both going through a whole breakup situation. But the controversy was so thick with them. Because one side leaded to one side doing something to the other party. You know, it was done. The fourth album was never supposed to even come out. It was supposed to be dropped. No tour, no nothing. But that was like probably one of their best albums ever. The fourth album was like, my goodness, we got to do a tour. There's so much money to be made off this album. Like, to let it go by would be stupid. And he was like, dude, I don't think you understand, you know, where they at right now as far as people. Like, as far as just, you know, being down with each other. This is not a good thing. So, as Eric B. and Rakim was breaking up, so was EPMD. Both Eric's going through everything at the same time. Their names was always connected. Dude, um, I should have said this on the Patreon, but screw it. When they were going through their problems with Sleeping Bag Records, you know, for some reason, some dudes decided that they was going to, you know, run down. <laughs> they was going to run down on... Uh, the record company and tell them what's what you know and and this was not a good idea <laughs> okay because we don't have all the details to this yet but you know these are some white guys who had like the jerky boys and all that stuff who can't like created the records and all that used to make those comedy tapes they had nothing to do with hip-hop so when they didn't get like what they were supposed to get and and things weren't going the way that was supposed to some friends decided to you know we're gonna help do this for our homeboys and what they did is put EMPMD in a very liable situation from the jump and Russell Simmons bailed him out of that problem but we'll get to that later on the Patreon but um, when the album dropped, Business Never Personal, they were done with each other. <laughs> they were completely done at that time. Like, all that happened. You know, and they got all these people there on tour. And some of these people are the people that tied up, you know, PMD family. You know what I'm saying? So when you see stuff like that, you know, who gonna want to record with somebody that didn't jerk them like that? You know, you don't want to be cool with them. You don't want to skate with them. Nothing. Man, it was plenty of times somebody ran up on Eric thinking he was Eric B. Eric Sermon, that is. Because they called him E-Double. Yo, E-Double. So, 
they thinking, they was like, yo, and some people call him Eric, they thought he was Eric B. And this was when they was EPMD. And some harm almost came to Eric's sermon, because I don't know what the problem was, but it was some, you know, big money going out with some drug dealers, and he was supposed to be doing something that I guess he just took the money. And, the, and Eric's sermon almost paid for that. You know what I'm saying? And that's not him. See, back then, there was no cell phones. So, you know, everybody had those brick phones you plug in. You had the battery packs. Big time dudes, they had that back then. But Eric Sermon, life was saved that night because of it. EPMD. <laughs> uh, that was Eric and Parrish making dollars. <laughs> So that's what it was. Uh, that's what it was when they came out with it. EPMD from Brentwood, Long Island. I mean, that was the thing. Everybody knew of each other. So Eric B and Eric Sermon knew each other. Like they seen each other before and everything. It was never no problems. You know what I'm saying? It was. But that man's business always kept coming back on Eric Sermon. Or if Eric Sermon was attached to something, it would blow back on Eric B. But it'd be mostly Eric B problems running up on Eric Sermon. But it's crazy that both Eric's were both like caught in a situation where they were going through similar situations or having similar connections. Like with Wendy Williams. It's like two Eric's being associated with Wendy Williams. To the point where everybody thought <laughs> Eric Sermon was the one who was dating Wendy when she was dating a Eric and it was Eric B. Um, no, it's different because Eric and Parrish making dollars is just, was like a funny pun. Parrish PMD was the Mike doctor. Parrish the Mike doctor. And Eric name was Easy Eric. Like Easy E, but there was already an Easy E in the game. So you already got an Easy E. And without even knowing Easy E at that time when he came up with that name, he was Easy Eric. And then they got another Eric. And he was like, man, he's Easy E already? Then it was another guy who was Easy E, claiming he was the real Easy in LA. And then it was the Battle of the Easies. So we'll talk about that later, too. I just wanted to give y'all some hip-hop history moments and what was going on. Hope I ain't take up too much of your time. I'm out. Don't forget to subscribe to the page, hit the notification bell, like the video, and definitely you want to support the Cash App is Carcino. K-A-R-C-E-N-O. And I'm out the devil.